I thought I'd take a look at solving 12.1 on a laptop or some of the things you might do to analyze the data. One of the first things that I would actually probably do is get a feel for what the data looks like on a box plot. Here I'm selecting the data. I'll do uh, Control C or Command C copy, but I'm, I'm doing a, a copy operation here. And then I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to look for box plot R. Uh, that's the easy way to go find it. Data upload, paste data, tab separated. Spreadsheets come in tab separated. Command V or Control V. There's my trenches. Data visualization. And I can now do a screen capture of this image if I wish but it right off the bat tells me that the trenches the dark lines are the median so the medians are pretty much the same but the mean on the Mariana median on the Mariana seems to be higher than the others and indeed the uh, the whole box is elevated relative to the other boxes the first quartile is as high as the third quartile here and this is a third quartile here it's it's, it's up above many of the other trenches. So this looks interesting in terms of being elevated. I see three outliers, all high, and that's somewhat interesting. So that would be a first look, and that would be a chart that I could potentially include in my, uh, 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 in my um, uh, presentation. Uh, I'll set that aside for now since I'm recording the screen. I can't capture the screen directly at the same time. I'll go back here, and now that I know there are some differences, I'll grab these rows here, and I saw a difference in the medians. Let's see if the means are any different. And I'll type in here equals the average of this trench, A2 to A11. And because of the geometry of my spreadsheet, I can then fill that across, just down to Peru, Chile. Maybe I'll shrink these a little so it all can kind of fit on one screen. Do the same thing here, maybe. Let's make it easier to see what I'm doing. Well, except the first one, which has all the text at the bottom, but we'll pull that back and it'll all work out. So these are the averages, and I can see that there are differences, but I can see that even better if I make a chart. Now this chart has got some issues with it here. Didn't quite work out as well as I hoped. So let me delete that and let me go ahead and uh, do a uh, one column inserted on the left. This will be my statistic. This is the mean. That's going to affect the way the chart gets made. Ha, huh, that looks better. You see now at the bottom it's got the, the mean. This is not going to be the statistic. This is going to be the trench. The trench. And this is the average number of plastic particles per amphipod per trench, if you will. But the chart now is quite informative because most of these columns, just as I saw in that box plot that I started to see there, I can see here that the one trench stands up quite a bit more. In fact, I can put those numbers on there so it's easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and go into the series, scroll down, add some data labels. Also. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down to the grid lines, vertical axis. You may want to go back and review this. Minor count. I'm going to throw in four. It'll make my chart look a little better. That looks a little bit nicer. I can now see the differences a little bit more clearly. And I have the actual means on each column. That's going to be a nice chart. At this point, I've got sort of the beginnings of a sufficient analysis, but any statistician will probably next to ask if this is an unusual or different. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have 
I'm going to go ahead and go after confidence intervals. So what I've got right now is sufficient. I could build a reasonable presentation that starts to discuss uh, the differences between these different trenches. But I'm going to go one step beyond. I'm going to go ahead and get the sample size. And I'm going to put that here equals the count of that A2 to A11 that there. Being uh, somewhat lazy, I'm going to need that. Copy, enter. I'm going to also want the standard deviation. Let me just call that SX, abbreviate it, as is our habit, the standard deviation. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste. I did a copy. Uh, yeah, I know you can't see the copy, but I did a copy. It's a little long. I'll deal with that later. Now I'm going to go after the standard error. I'm heading for a 95% confidence interval. The standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. I'll need a t-critical equals the t-inverse. I want a 95% confidence interval, so I'm going to do t minus 1 minus 0.95, or I could put in 0 0.05, but not 1 minus 0 0.05, and minus 1 t-critical. That's above 2. That's good. That's good. Now I'll, I'm going to do something that's going to look odd, but you'll see it leads to somewhere. Copy, paste. Down here, I'm going to put the lower bound. I'm going to have the lower bound here. This is going to be the mean minus the t critical times the standard error. Then here, I'm going to put the mean, and I'm going to repeat the mean again. This is because a candlestick chart needs four values, and I'm heading for a candlestick chart to show what the 95% confidence intervals look like. This will be the mean plus the t critical times the standard error. And the mean is just equal to the mean. And it's equal to the mean. You can't fill down that one. That one won't fill down properly. Now I'll just fill across this, which won't work because I have to fill these across. I should check back here the FF. This is all still working properly. This is the way it should work. I'll pretty it up a little bit maybe with Decrease, oh, too many decimal places. Okay, something like that. Not bad. A couple decimal places. Probably just leave it at one for now. That'll be good enough. And what I'll do is I'll select, uh, let me do it this way. Just select these columns here. Chart. I'll change, scroll up. Change to a candlestick chart way down here. And this time it came out right. Now sometimes it doesn't and I have to click on switch rows and columns. But this time uh, the software figured out what I was trying to do. Once again I'll go to customize. I like to add in minor minor steps. Four will be a nice uh, number for the minor step. Those will be 0.2 in other words. Because now I can see that the 95% confidence interval for the Mariana Trench is well separated from Izu Bonin. Uh, Japan probably, New Hebrides, not sure. There's a little bit of overlap here. It probably won't be significant. Hard to tell. This is, there's more overlap with Kermadec and Mariana. Can't say using traditional frequent statistics that it's statistically significantly different. But these are the 95% confidence intervals for the trenches. And essentially, visually, uh, we can see that there is some difference here. Uh, I want a vertical axis title. This will be the um, number of plastic particles. Essentially, we're talking about average plastic particles. Um, so we could probably do a little bit better job with this chart. I'll need this guy put somewhere else. Separate it out. There we go. That's down there. 95% confidence interval. For the trenches, so I've got my charts, I've got some statistics I can report, I've got the original data. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab and put slides.new. That's my shortcut for getting to this. Uh, this will be um, plastic particles in amphipods. Uh, 
or you can put any title you want for Pacific Trenches. I'll usually go down this side and try to find something. That has a nice blue look to it. Ah, there we go. Blue, the color of the ocean. And then I'll go ahead and this uh, gives, it gives itself a name when I click on it up there. That will help me find it later. And I'll go ahead and add a new slide. Uh, this slide uh, will be the... Um, let me go ahead and put in the average number of Partic plastic particles per amphipod per trench. That's a long title, so I'll have to shrink it down some, but I'm going to take it back to say here, play with it that way, see if I can get this to work out. I'll, I'll put that away. I don't need that. Get a little bit bigger screen to work with. I think I'll go ahead and bring this up some. Mm -hmm. And then I can maybe increase the size and let it fill that up a bit better. And this one, I'm, I'm going to take this out, just delete that, and I'm going to do insert chart from sheets. And I'm going to go ahead and there's my, there's my sheet right there, these are my most recent ones. I'll select that spreadsheet. There's two charts. This is the chart I want. And I can import that chart right into my presentation directly in. I don't really need to see this. I'm not going to be adding any speaker notes for now, so I'll just shrink that down so I can get this guy to fit in. And slide it around. Maybe I'll find... There it is. Center. That's centered. So that that's the basic. Now, there will have to be some text talking about which is the closest trench and maybe some background information. Um, I'm overly abbreviating. I'm really just trying to show the mechanics of putting this together. I often do this. I'll duplicate the slide. I might sound strange. Now, it can be confusing. I've got two slides that look alike, but I'm on this slide. I'm going to go in here. I want these changes I just made to stick in my next slide. So 95% confidence interval for the mean number of plastic particles. Well, it's going to take more text in it. Take this guy out. Insert, we'll do this again, from a chart from sheets. This can only be done on a laptop. This can't be done from mobile this way. And I'll get that one in. Now, there's more to do, but again, I'm just trying to show the mechanics. I should go back here and go put together a new slide here. Uh, this slide, I'm going to probably change it over to a some kind of a title and body slide would be a good place to be. I'm going to have an introduction where I'm going to tell, tell the reader about the uh, nature of the data in the issue. So that's where I have to give some background. Uh, but that those are two good starts. If I want to report statistics, then I'm going to go back here and grab something like this table here, copy that, and I can actually put in a new slide. I'm going to duplicate this same slide again, but I'm going to take out this chart, and I'm just going to do Control-V Paste um, and link it to the spreadsheet. Now, it'll land in a funny place, and it will be way too small. So I probably need to see. I don't know if I can do much to make it bigger because it is linked to the uh, spreadsheet. I'm not sure I can edit it from here. I have to edit it in the original. But let's have a look at whether I can bring up the size here some. i got to bring up the table size. A lot of things got to be adjusted. But I can play with things till I get it to look right. Ah. That's better. I probably shouldn't have copied this, but that's okay. We'll leave it in there. Eh, maybe that's a good thing to leave in there. At least explains what the numbers are. So I can include a table with data, as you see here. Um, I brought it in. It's actually a linked table currently. It's currently linked to the source. Uh, but uh, uh, that that that's the current setup. I could unlink it. I might need to unlink it for various reasons. 
um, if I was sharing it for some reason and I, it, and maybe I, the linkage wouldn't hold up. Um, but that be it or may, that's, the, that's a way to get data in. These are the means. Um, the people tend to like pictures better, but this would be a way to include the means. I wouldn't necessarily put in the raw data, but you certainly could add on a concluding slide. You know, that's our introduction, so yeah, let's go ahead. Put in a new slide, and this, we're going to have our conclusions where we tell the audience what we found out. Here we can also put, traditionally in a presentation, an email address so people who wanted to contact us about the original data could. We don't always put the data in the presentation because the data is usually more than what we're playing with in a class like this. It could be hundreds of rows of data or thousands. So we usually don't include the data in the presentation. But this is where we wrap up, you know, wrap up all of the questions, wrap up all of the questions posed would go here. Well, that's, that's this would be sufficient uh, uh, on the rubric. I'd mark that as sufficient. That's a good starting place. That's a great chart. This would be optimal. Here you see the means, just as you saw them here, the, the same basic contract. But I've now included a 95% confidence interval for the mean. And that helps someone who understands this chart and uh, know that this isn't just a random difference. That looks like it's probably uh, it's probably going to turn out to be a significant difference. These the bar here does not overlap the other means. The problem I have is I am doing a multi-way comparison between these uh, these. So because there are six, well more than. Th there's more than six comparisons probably being made, but there are six. So I should be running at a, I should be using something called a Bonferroni correction. And I should actually probably be looking at something less for, if I, if I went after a p-value, I'd want to see a p-value less than 0 0.05 divided by six. I, and there's some complications to that. I'm oversimplifying by a lot here. But at the very least, I'd want to get a p-value between uh, them of something less than 6. And this would be a more advanced analysis to go after. But I'd be looking for p-values below 0 0.008, below 0.8 percent, below 0 0.008, before I decided it was significant. Well, that's kind of a look at... 12.1 and where it goes and with the intent primarily of showing you the mechanics of working with your spreadsheet using the tools you know how to use some basic tools confidence intervals can often take you a long way uh, and then how you can set that up in a spreadsheet I'm using just Google slides uh, to submit this there's a couple different ways to submit it you can use the Google Drive LTI 1.3 I could download it as a PowerPoint and then upload the PowerPoint. That, that would be another way to do it. I could download it as a PDF, upload it as a PDF. Lots of different options as to how I want to get it submitted, uh, including other options inside Canvas, like the Google LTI 1.3 option. That's it for this video.